Hey folks, Captain Lance Valentine here and welcome to Teaching Fishing the 8 Steps Breakdown. Tonight we're going through our 8 steps and we're going to stop and focus tonight on step number 4, which is lure speed. So before we get going though, let's go back and review exactly what the 8 steps are and why they're important to help you catch more fish. The 8 steps is the foundation, the structure, the, the framework that we use here at Teach and Fishing for everything that we teach. And what it is, it's a systematic way of approaching a day of fishing and using information in a way that allows you to actually make good decisions when you're on the water. So the 8 steps are in order of importance, step number 1 being the right location, step number 2 being the right depth of water and know how deep the fish are, step number 3 is have your lure at the right depth. Step number four is to get your lure speed right, so we're going to talk about tonight. Step number five is get the right lure size. Step number six is the right lure shape. Step number seven, the right lure action. And step number eight is the right lure color in order of importance. So remember, step number six is not important until steps one through five are actually right. That's what the eight steps are, and that's the foundation of everything we do here at Teach and Fishing. So tonight we're talking about step number four, lure speed. You notice that we are finally below the line. We use that line to separate what we call above the line and below the line. So everything above the line is location, where you need to be, the right part of the water column, you need to be in the right depth of water, and you need to have your lures at the right depth. And then below the line, we start talking about actually the presentation, what we call the what. And we're gonna to start tonight with lure speed, all right? Here's a few things to think about when you think about lure speed, just some general ideas. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk tonight, a little bit later in the seminar tonight, we're going to talk about how fast you can actually go and how lure speed can really be a trigger even for negative fish. But understand that the more active fish are, the faster your lure can be presented and still create a bite. Use that to your advantage to get the most fish possible from a single school. I would tell you most fishermen, no matter what they fish for, no matter what time of year, don't go fast enough to trigger those really aggressive fish fast and then go back and catch more fish out of the same school going a little bit slower. We're gonna talk about that a little bit tonight. Here's a couple general ideas to think about when you think about lure speed. Here are some conditions where you probably should be at the lower end of the speed spectrum. Uh, when fish are close to bottom, post final conditions, dirty water, pressured fish, fish in heavy cover that have a hard time seeing the lure because they're in heavy cover, and any time you're fishing at night or low light, again, fish have a hard time seeing. Slower lure is a little easier for them to track. Here's, some, conversely, some conditions where you should think about running at the high end of the spectrum. We'll talk about how fast we can go again a little bit later tonight. Any time that fish are off the bottom, any time you have stable weather, and the longer that weather is stable, the better the fishing is going to be, the faster you can run. Clean water, where fish can see a bait from a long way away, we can go a little faster. Anytime you see a lot of fish that are schooled up and you know that they're actively aggressively feeding, we can go fast to trigger some, some uh, aggressive bites. Fish that are in open water, fish that are living in open water and chasing their bait are used to bait fish trying to get away from them. So fast speeds work and anytime you're faced with clear conditions. Clear water, clear skies, fish can see a long way, they can see your bait, don't be afraid to run fast. So there are some just basic general ideas uh, on speed. Let's take a quick little break here. We're gonna come back and break down speed of lure into three factors that affect the lure speed you should be looking for every time you're on the water. This fish actually told us a story. We'd gone about 15, 20 minutes out of fish. We started to turn to come back through our waypoints, mark some fish on the graph. This one hit. This board was actually on the outside turn, so this was actually a little bit faster. Um, so this fish is telling us a little something. We need to maybe bump our speed a little bit, work our pattern. Again, every fish tells you a story on the way to getting it right. This is a good fish too. No, yeah, that worked. Feels like a little bit nicer fish. They're all nice this time of year, eh? Oh yeah. I was gonna get in our lead core rod, but it's all right. It's another man. Another nice average fish. This here's probably pushing four pounds with his little fall feed sack on. Duncan took him there. There's that, uh, careful there, Dunk. It's that deep husky jerk again, 50 feet back. And again, show, show him to Jim. Show him to Jim. Hold him up there. Yeah, our three and a half pounder there. And again, that fish came as we were turning to get back into our waypoints. 
we're turning that fish came on the outside turn so there's our speed thing i just asked duncan 10 seconds before that fish goes how fast you're going so well, we're going a little slower because we're actually turning into the wind to get turned around so the boat's actually going a little slower and boom we catch a fish on the outside turn which means that that board was probably going about the same speed as we've been going in a straight line so speed control depth control really critical to catching those fish guys i cannot stress it enough pay attention to those two things Speed control, depth control. The lures will take care of themselves as you fish. But if you get the speed control and depth control right, you got a lot better chance of catching fish and working on the pattern than you do if you worry about the lure first. Remember, just like we showed you the first part of the crankbait DVD, the lure is last. There's a lot of things to do before you pick the lure. How deep you need to go, what lure, shape, size, action, how fast am I gonna run, how deep do I need to go, all those things, the depth control and speed control, much more critical than picking the right lure. Wrong lure at the right speed, the right place, the right depth will catch a lot of fish. The right lure at the wrong speed, wrong depth, where there's no fish, will catch nothing. Remember, the lure is last. Pay attention to what's important, you catch a lot more fish. Warrior Lures, custom designed and painted spoons, blades, and crankbaits for any species of fish. Check out the complete line of Warrior products, including the new Warrior XL Flutter Spoon, online or at your local tackle retailer. Proudly made in Michigan. Trackstack Fishing Systems, manufacturer of high quality mounting track, rod holders, electronics mounts, downriggers, and fishing accessories. Any angler, any species, any boat. Trackstack Fishing Systems, proudly made in Michigan. Rytec Marine, makers of custom designed transducer mounts and gimbal brackets. Great sonar performance starts with a quality transducer mount and Rytec has a mounting option for any brand on any boat. Rytec Marine, making life a little easier on the water. Worldwide Marine Insurance, don't get caught with a loss to find out you have the wrong insurance for your boat and fishing gear. Contact Bob Llewellyn today for a free checkup of your current coverage. Worldwide Marine Insurance, anglers insuring anglers. Okay, anglers, welcome back to our eight step breakdown. Tonight we're talking about step number four, lure speed. And there's three factors I want you to think about when you start to consider what your lure speed should be every day. The first of those is what forage is your game fish feeding on? That's a very, very important part of lure speed. And as we go through the next, uh, the next steps and we, and we wrap up this whole eight step breakdown, you'll notice that starting with our last step, depth of lure, that forage is always going to be our number one factor. Because when we start picking lures, lure speeds, lure depths, and the size, shape, and action of our lure, it's important that we understand the forage fish that the game fish we're chasing are feeding on. That's absolutely important. Because each type of forage fish is built a little different, designed a little different, and more importantly, swims through the water differently. Traditionally, the longer and skinnier the bait fish are, the slower they move through the water. They have more of a, of a, of a real quick, tight movement. Um, as the fish, game, as, as bait fish get a little bit thicker, like, like shad and elwise, as they get a little thicker top to bottom, they have a tendency to move a little faster and have a little more side to side action. So our bait choice and our lure speed is gonna be determined by the forage that the fish are chasing. Now, there are times that we can use a little bit more lure speed, a little bit less to maybe trigger some fish, but understand that our starting point is going to be what kind of forage are the fish feeding on. Couple ways you can know that, by doing some research, um, look on your DNR website for the state that you fish, figure out what kind of bait fish live in the lake that you're fishing. The other thing you can do is, we, and you're gonna see these pictures now, every next every step we go through, you're gonna see these same three pictures, but by understanding how bait fish show up on your sonar and how different species of bait show up as different pictures on your sonar, you can get a good idea of the type of forage that your game fish are chasing and dictate your lure speed to that. So again, this screen shows us a lot of things. It shows us a school of shad way up high in the water column, and it also shows us walleyes off the bottom. So remember back to our general factors, we talked about fish off the bottom and fish that are schooled tightly create high speeds. Shad are high speed movers. We should be moving pretty quick to catch these fish. So using your sonar is really gonna help you dial in not only to the type of forage, but also some other factors that determine how fast we should be trolling. School of shiners is actually, shiners have a tendency to live more in the middle of the water column. So again, we're kind of using the, our sonar to give us an idea of what kind of not only forage is in uh, the body of water we're fishing, but how close the game fish are to them, how aggressive they are, and how we can start to adjust our speed 
based on all of those things. And again, our last picture here is fish on the bottom. We're going to probably need to go a little bit slower for these fish. These fish may be on the bottom because they're resting. They may on the be on the bottom because they're feeding on gobies or perch, bait fish that don't move very fast. So again, all these factors kind of go into picking a lure speed. But understanding the forage that you're deal dealt with, the forage that the game fish you're fishing for is feeding on right now, that is the number one critical thing of how fast you should start. We're probably going to adjust a little bit faster than that most days, but that's where we should get an idea of where we should start. All right, how fast can I go? This is a little trick that I use. I want to figure out how fast I can go. The faster I can go, the more water I can cover, and remember, the more fish I'm going to trigger. I think high speed triggers a lot of fish. Um, so when I catch a fish, when I put that bait back in the water, I usually, and I'm usually 99% of the time, I will increase my speed by about two tenths of a mile an hour. So if I catch a fish at two miles an hour, I'm gonna put that bait back, I'm gonna bump the speed to 2.2. So as I put baits back after catching a fish, I'll begin to slowly increase the speed by one or two tenths of a mile an hour each time. At some point, you'll be going too fast to continue getting bites. Now we can slow down and start getting bites, but again, we have found the speed range for today's conditions. Most guys don't ever go as fast as they can. Speed has a lot of advantages. The ability to actually go fast, cover more water, get your lures in front of more fish, and weed out those aggressive fish quicker can help you have a great day when everybody else is having a good day, or help you have a good day when everybody else is struggling. So high speeds can be a trigger to fish. And remember, get this all the time. Well, you know, I do a lot of fishing in the spring, in the fall, the water's cold, I don't want to go very fast. Stop for a minute and think. Game fish are expecting bait fish to swim away fast when they're being attacked. So if I'm a walleye and I move up on a, a bait fish and it doesn't move or it just keeps going like this, I, you, you know, you're just slow trolling, a, you know, one five because the water's cold, that's not a natural reaction to a walleye. When a walleye comes up and gets ready to attack a bait fish, that bait fish should do what? It should take off. So remember, game fish are expecting bait fish to swim away fast when they are being attacked. Take advantage of this, uh, this response by the bait fish and fish faster than you think is proper for the conditions you're faced with, especially if you have negative fish that don't want to bite. So two things to think about going fast, where fast can be an advantage. Number one, Remember, bait fish are going to naturally swim and try to get away from game fish, so there is going to be a fast movement of bait fish. Game fish are used to seeing bait fish move fast, even in cold water. The second thing is my what I call my Thanksgiving analogy. So a lot of people think when fish are non-aggressive that you want to go slow. But imagine this. Imagine it's 6 o'clock Thanksgiving night. You're sitting on, tea, on the couch. You're watching a football game. You've got your stretchy pants on. You've got your belt on done. You're like, man, I cannot eat another thing. I am just loaded. Well, here comes somebody with a little plate with a piece of Aunt Millie's pecan pie, and you're like, I, I can't. I, I just, I absolutely 100% can't. So even though that looks really good, and it comes to you slow, and you could just simply grab it, you don't want it because you're full or you don't feel like eating anymore. But if your 10-year-old nephew comes around the corner and throws a football at your face, what do you do? You react instantly. That's what I think speed can help you catch a negative fish. A night crawler or a leech going by a negative fish, he doesn't care, doesn't care, doesn't care, I don't want it. But all of a sudden, here comes a bait. It's going fast, it's making noise, it's, it's got some vibration. It's going really quick, making lots of flash. He doesn't know what it is, but he knows he doesn't want it there. You can actually trigger non-aggressive, inactive fish, sometimes better going fast than you ever can going slow. So think about that next time you're on the water. Fish are expecting the bait to run away. I would tell you most fo folks don't fish fast enough. We catch a lot of fish in the summertime at three, seven, three, eight, three, nine, four miles an hour, a lot of walleye. We do most of our spring cold water trolling, 40, 45, 50 degrees. And our fall trolling, 45, 50, 40 degrees. A lot of that up right around three miles an hour and we catch a lot of fish. And there's days that we catch more and or bigger fish than the guys do fishing slow because we trigger them with speed. This year, Think about going faster. When you catch a fish, go faster, go faster, go faster. You'd be surprised how many fish you catch. All right, let's take a quick little break, and we're going to come back and talk about factor number two on how to determine your lure speed every time you're out on the water. <laughs> 
Warrior Lures, custom designed and painted spoons, blades, and crankbaits for any species of fish. Check out the complete line of Warrior products, including the new Warrior XL Flutter Spoon, online or at your local tackle retailer. Proudly made in Michigan. TrackStack Fishing Systems, manufacturer of high quality mounting track, rod holders, electronics mounts, downriggers, and fishing accessories. Any angler, any species, any boat. TrackStack Fishing Systems, proudly made in Michigan. Rytec Marine, makers of custom designed transducer mounts and gimbal brackets. Great sonar performance starts with a quality transducer mount and Rytec has a mounting option for any brand on any boat. Rytec Marine, making life a little easier on the water. Worldwide Marine Insurance, don't get caught with a loss to find out you have the wrong insurance for your boat and fishing gear. Contact Bob Llewellyn today for a free checkup of your current coverage. Worldwide Marine Insurance, anglers insuring anglers. Fishhawk Electronics, providing lure speed and water temperature at any depth. Featuring hardwired models X4 and X4D and the new portable X2, anglers can have the Fishhawk advantage anywhere they fish. Trolling without a Fishhawk is simply called boating. Max Lure, the original since 1969. Catch more fish with the wedding ring spinner, smile blade, double D dodger, flashlight attractor, and more. Max Lures, a legacy of innovation for 50 years. Macklin Heating and Cooling, experts in the installation, maintenance, and service of home comfort systems. Family owned and operated in mid-Michigan for 50 years, Macklin Heating and Cooling, where your comfort matters to us. Procure Bait Sense, manufacturer of high quality bait scents, cures, and dyes. Made with whole fresh bait, Procure Sense perfectly mimic what fish eat every day. Procure, helping anglers worldwide catch more big fish. Okay, welcome back to our eight step breakdown. We're talking about step number four tonight, lure speed. And let's go on to our second factor that uh, goes into picking the right lure speed and keeping the right lure speed. And that is wind, waves, and current. Something a lot of folks don't pay enough attention to. Now, we have to, to be accurate with our speed, we have to have some way to actually measure our speed. Most anglers that use speed, if they're, if they're not casters, if they are trollers, most of them will use the speed over ground on their GPS. That's a pretty simple way to do it. But all that tells us is how fast our boat is moving across the water. It doesn't really tell us how fast our lure is moving. So we need some way to actually be able to record and analyze and get data back from where our lures actually are in the water column, how deep they're actually running. There's lots of ways to do this. Uh, products like a Smart Troll, uh, um, a fish hawk that actually goes on a downrigger or the new portable fish hawk some kind of probe or some kind of system that lets you know how fast your lures are moving, where they are in the water column is absolutely critical to being the best fisherman that you can be. So why is this important? Why do wind, waves, and current make a big difference on lure speed? The biggest thing is this. Let's take an example. Let's say that we're moving across the water at two miles an hour. Our lure, let's say there's no subsurface current, our lure is going to have the action at two miles an hour. It's gonna be two miles an hour, it's gonna, it's gonna look whatever action it has at two miles an hour. I'm gonna show you how this, all this works in just a second here. But our lure basically is moving at two miles an hour. Let's change that and let's add a subsurface current that's going the same direction as the lure is. It's only a half a mile hour current. So the current is half a mile an hour. Our boat's going two miles an hour speed over ground. So our boat's moving two miles an hour. There's a half a mile hour following current, that lure is actually only going 1.5 through the water. So we've lost some action, right? If you're fishing spinners, it really makes a difference because now that spinner blade isn't spinning like you think it is at two miles an hour. That lure is being pushed forward and water pressure is making that lure actually go a little bit slower in the water. Even though our speed over ground is still two, like it was with no current, our lure is acting different, okay? Let's turn that current around and now our speed over ground on our boat is still that same two miles an hour. So we think we're doing everything exactly right, but we're going into a half mile hour current. Now our bait is moving at two and a half miles an hour. So by turning the boat around one way or the other, we actually change the lure. Speed over ground is exactly the same. We think we're doing it right. Speed over ground is exactly the same. One way the lure is going two and a half, the other way it's going one. That's a mile an hour difference in our lure action. That is a pretty distinct and pretty 
uh, pretty big difference in lure speed and lure action. So we have to have a way to measure how fast our lures are going down at the uh, area where they are. So what a fish hawk does is it allows you to put it in there and actually see how fast the probe is going. The probe has a speed wheel, so you can actually move that probe up and down in the water column based on where your lures are and get a lure speed and know exactly what your lures are doing. Uh, the Smart Troll product actually clips onto your line and actually knows exactly where that lure is in the water column and actually works on each lure. So some device to let us know how fast, if we're going into or against a current, is really critical to being as good as we can uh, with our lure speed. So here's a little chart I made up just to kind of show you what current does. So if I have a current and there's no current, my lure speed is going to be the same as my GPS and my lure depth is going to be whatever my base is. So we talked uh, last week about the breakdown as far as depth. I use the precision trolling app. So if uh, my lure should be at 12 feet, it's going to be at 12 feet with the amount of line I have out. It's going to be there because uh, my speed is the same as the GPS and the current isn't affecting it. If I have a current that's going with the boat direction, my lure speed is going to be slower than the GPS actually shows me. And if I'm running on weighted crankbaits, my depth will be the same. But if I'm running weighted lures, inline weights, snap weights, lead cord, divers, uh, jet divers, disc divers, trad poles, any kind of weighted device, my lure is going to actually be running deeper because it's going slower. So I may actually be deeper than I want to be because I'm going with the current that's actually slowing the bait down and making that bait go slower. Conversely, if the current is going against the boat direction, my lure is actually moving faster than the GPS. On weighted crankbaits, the depth's not going to change. But again, now with weight, our weighted lures are now running shallower than we think they are. So if you guys have caught fish going one direction and you can't catch fish coming back the other, and you got my, my speed's exactly right, you're probably dealing with a current and one way your baits are at the right depth, the other way they're not. That's why it's important to be able to not only measure speed over ground, the speed of our boat, but also be able to measure the speed and if we're going with or against the current down where our lures are. Those are all important factors as far as speed control goes to really get you dialed in to becoming a very, very efficient fisherman and using that speed of lure to your advantage to catch more fish every day. All right, let's take one more break. We're gonna come back with our last factor and break down the final things we need to think about when we're talking about lure speed. Fishhawk Electronics, providing lure speed and water temperature at any depth. Featuring hardwired models X4 and X4D and the new portable X2, anglers can have the fishhawk advantage anywhere they fish. Trolling without a fishhawk is simply called boating. Max Lure, the original since 1969. Catch more fish with the wedding ring spinner, smile blade, double D dodger, flashlight attractor, and more. Max Lures, a legacy of innovation for 50 years. Macklin Heating and Cooling, experts in the installation, maintenance, and service of home comfort systems. Family owned and operated in mid-Michigan for 50 years, Macklin Heating and Cooling, where your comfort matters to us. Procure Bait Sense, manufacture of high quality bait scents, cures, and dyes. Made with whole fresh bait, Procure scents perfectly mimic what fish eat every day. Procure, helping anglers worldwide catch more big fish. All right, anglers, welcome back. We're getting ready to wrap up our conversation tonight about step number four of our eight steps. And the first step that deals with presentation, lure speed. And now I want to wrap up talking about some what I call advanced speed ideas, some things that you can do to think about how to actually incorporate the right lure speed into your fishing. First thing to understand is that speed changes can trigger fish. So I very rarely troll in a straight line. Uh, I don't like to do that. I usually put a little bit of uh, very subtle S turns into my trolling. When you do that, lures that are on the outside of the turn go faster and lures that are on the inside of the turn actually go slower. So by keeping my boat speed exactly the same, I can actually see if fish want lures moving faster or fish moving, lures moving slower. That's a great way to kind of figure out if I got the right speed but by keeping the, the same speed in the boat, not doing a lot of changing, I can actually just turn again, outside lures will go faster, inside lures will go slower. And if you start to see something happen, you know that you either need to pick up or slow down your speed. It's a great way 
to efficiently fish, keep lots of lines in the water, and check multiple speeds as you're moving through the water making those S turns. Another thing that triggers fish is changes in speed. So let's say uh, the yellow line here, we're going a mile and a half, and the green line we go two. Then we go back to one and a half. Sometimes you'll get fish to bite as that lure speed changes. So the key is to figure out what was the actual trigger. Was it the new speed? I'm going one and a half, now I go two. Was it going two? Or was it that change from going one and a half to two? Or conversely, going the change going from two to one. So the sooner, the closer you are to that change when you catch a fish, I would tell you, so let's say we're going one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, we go two, we instantly catch a fish. I would tell you to probably not go two. I would tell you to keep going one and a half and add more uh, pick, pick up in speed. So one and a half, two, one and a half, two. It wasn't necessarily going two, it was that change from one and a half to two, which again, remember, what's that look like? A bait fish trying to get away from a game fish. So sometimes it tells you you need to go faster. Other times it tells you that fish, for whatever reason, want a change in speed, either faster to slower or slower to faster. So as you make a decision on determining what speed, either use S turns or speed up and slow down the boat and pay attention. What was the trigger? Was it the new speed? or was it the change in speed? And if it was a change in speed, did you catch more fish on the fast to slow transition or the slow to fast? Pay attention to all of these and trying these when you're on the water is gonna help you catch more fish because it's gonna help you get to the right lure speed faster. So how can we do this on our boat? Lots of different ways. And one of the things that when I talk to anglers a lot, they, they get tied into only fishing one way. Every time they troll, they feel like they have to use the kicker. They have to use the bow mount. Um, that's not the case. There are lots of ways to get your speed right. You can use the main engine, uh, main engine with bags, main engine with a kicker to scrub speed. I do this a lot because I have an autopilot on my 200 horsepower Suzuki. And by having that big engine going in the thrust, it's very easy to turn the boat, especially if I'm going with or coring the weights. So I may want to go uh, two miles an hour. I may get my big engine to two and a half. So I've got all that thrust to help the autopilot turn. I may actually put my kicker motor in reverse five tenths, a mile, five tenths of a mile an hour to get two miles an hour on my speed over ground, as opposed to taking my kicker, turning it all the way up, really running it fast to get two miles an hour and not being able to be as accurate with my autopilot on my big engine. So that's an idea to try. Um, and then maybe you know the main engine with the bow electric to steer. So maybe use a bow electric uh, like a motor guide XI-5 that allows you to go to waypoints or allows you to program in S turns, uh, some assist by using the main engine for thrust. And the same thing with the kicker. Maybe, maybe today calls for using a kicker or a kicker with boat control bags to slow you down a little bit or a kicker with the bow mount electric to add a little more thrust and to steer with the ability to use a handheld remote. You may end up with a day you just use your bow uh, electric. Uh, there may be a day that just the wind is pushing you fast enough. Uh, or maybe the wind is really close, but you need one or two uh, small drift bags to get you to the right speed by just using the wind. So all of these are ways to control your speed. Don't think that just because you're trolling crawler harness is slow, you should use the bow mount. Don't think that just because you're trolling crankbaits at two miles an hour, the only way to do it is with the kicker. There are lots of different ways to get speed control and get it exactly right. You wanna make sure that you're dialed in. And I like my boat to go a little faster than I want it to go, and then use something to slow it down, either scrub speed off with the kicker or maybe add bags. So I may go faster than I wanna go, put bags in the water so I have more thrust from whatever prop I'm using, that helps me turn better and stay in better control. So some, some things to think about. And I'm gonna break it down, I'm gonna wrap up tonight's uh, uh, eight step breakdown with this. Lure speed, do whatever you have to do to get it right. Whatever you have to do, combination of motors and bags and forward and reverse, close your windshield, open your windshield, whatever you have to do to get it right. We have seen days, guys, sure as I'm standing here, that having your lure speed in a one to two tenth mile hour window catches fish. Having it too fast or too slow doesn't. And I mean one tenth of a mile an hour. I fished a professional walleye trail tournament in Arkansas a couple of years ago, finished 10th in the, in, the, in the professional walleye trail tournament. I was trolling spinners over uh, brush piles designed for crappies, but they had big walleyes in them too. If I went between one three and one four, I caught walleyes. Same exact place, same exact presentation, slower than one three, I caught crappies and big bluegills. 
anything faster than 1.4, I caught spotted bass. Same exact location, same exact presentation. The speed window for walleye was two tenths of a mile an hour. Slower than that, I caught panfish. Faster than that, I caught spotted bass. In that two tenth mile an hour range, I caught walleyes. Do whatever you have to do to get your speed right. I guarantee you're gonna catch more fish. Okay, all right, real quick, let's review the eight steps. Again, remember they're in order of importance, right location, right depth of water, know how deep the fish are. Get your lure to the right depth, get the lure speed we talked about tonight, get the lure size, lure shape, lure action, and lure color right. Next time you're with us, we're gonna talk about lure size. All right, remember those, they're very, very important to help you catch more fish. If you wanna learn more, check out our website, teachandfishing.com. We have the Teach and Fishing TV channel. Uh, if you go to teachandfishing.com, when you're there, go to the top of the page, this red box, sign up for our monthly newsletter, and then go to the TV station. You'll see the upper right-hand corner, there's a little icon that says guide. Click on that guide and you'll see a channel guide come across the bottom. We have at least two channels running all the time, sometimes up to three or four or five channels. You can use that guide to find any of the seminars, information, or interviews that we're running, so you can actually see some Teach and Fish and TV products. Really great stuff that we have there to watch. A lot of seminars over the course of the month to help you learn more about some of the things we've actually talked about today. If you wanna really dig deep and get all the latest, greatest, and deep details about how to catch more fish, check out our Teach and Fish and subscription service. Go to the website, teachandfishing.com, scroll down below the uh, TV screen, and you can see this link to the subscription service. Click on that link, you'll see all the details and what is involved with our subscription service. That's only for the hardcore angler that really wants to learn everything they can to catch more fish. We'll be back at the end of the month on our Teaching Fish and Facebook page uh, on May 26th at 7.30 on Facebook page slash Teach and Fishing or just go to Facebook and search Teach and Fishing. We'll be there at 7.30 for an hour live on May 26th to actually discuss this seminar and everything else that we are showing on Teaching Fish and TV this month. There's a live Q&A that you can participate in and get all of your questions answered. We'd love to have you there. And remember, teachandfishing.com is our website, our Facebook page, and if you have any questions, want to contact us or just need help, be sure to send us an email at teachandfishing at gmail.com and one of the Teach and Fishing staff members will get right back with you to help you with your fishing question. All right, folks, thanks for joining me tonight for this eight-step breakdown on lure speed. I'm Captain Lance Valentine. I can't wait to be back together again when we continue our breakdown of the eight steps.